Yup, that's me. Before I started climbing up walls, I was flipping in the air. The process of learning acrobatics as an adult taught me a lot of valuable lessons. I'll leave a link in the description to the TED talk I did and you can hear my story for yourself. Along with those lessons, I also gained a unique awareness from my body. As I got more into climbing, those physical skills from acrobatics started to manifest themselves on the wall. Ironically, I tried to fight it at first. Climbing is supposed to be static and controlled. It was only later that I started to embrace the dynamic aspects and was able to utilize a wider range of my athleticism. This video will go over the skills and insights I gained from learning backflips, among other things, and how they can be transferred to climbing more dynamically. Mike Tyson once said, My punch comes from my legs. This is a concept that most students of martial arts are familiar with. Power is initiated from the connection between your feet and the floor and transferred up the body and into the fists through utilizing the kinetic chain. Generally speaking, power comes from the ground. You can understand this very quickly by doing a simple test. Get into a stance with your non-dominant side in the front. For right-handed folks, this means your left leg is in the front. Now, using only your arm, throw a punch with your rear hand. If you don't have proper gloves, have a friend hold their hand up and hit their palm. Next, try throwing the same punch by pushing off the rear leg and pivoting the hips. Notice a difference? The movement we make with our arm is much more powerful when it's initiated from the feet. Energy travels up the body and leaves through the hand. We can apply the same concept in climbing. Our feet, instead of being connected to the ground, are connected to the wall. It's through that connection where all movements, especially dynamic ones, should be initiated. Pick a vertical or steep climb with decent handholds that are well distance apart. Before making the move to your target handhold, place your mind at your feet. Initiate the movement by actively pushing downward with the feet and feel your body being propelled towards the next hold. Jumping is a skill that gets a mixed response from people. I've seen a lot of strong folks shy away from it and tell me that they're naturally weak jumpers. On the flip side, I've seen unathletic looking people jump quite gracefully. Just like with all skills, jumping can be improved with practice. There are many factors that affect how well we can jump, but the one I want to focus the most on is timing. Contrary to common belief, jumping is a full body endeavor. The height of a jump depends as much on swinging the arms as it does pushing off of the legs. This utilization of the upper body is where timing comes into play. When we prepare for a jump, we loosen the arms and swing them behind us. We then have to time the upward swing of the arms to synchronize with the jumping of our legs. If we're successful, we've used the momentum of our arms to accentuate the upward force generated by our legs. This is what is meant when they say, jump with your shoulders. Applying the concept of timing to climbing, we ought to treat dynamic moves as movements done in one motion. Pulling of the arms have to be coordinated to occur in sync with pushing of the legs. A common mistake people make is locking off the arm and extending a hand out in hopes of reaching the hold statically. In the context of dynamic climbing, this is energy suicide. All of the energy is dissipated when the motion stops. It's much more cost-effective to involve the entire body in one well-timed motion to reach your target. The ability to generate a lot of force very quickly is the definition of power. If you study athletes across different sports, you can see that their movement is marked with a quality of explosiveness. How are these folks able to generate so much power? If we look closer, we can see that all their movements share a common feature compression and expansion. Think about a coil spring. It must first be compressed before it can expand. 
The quality or the explosiveness of the expansion depends on how well the coil is released from its compressed state. The cleaner the release, the more energy is transferred from the compression to power in the expansion. Let's take a closer look at the aspects of compression and release and how they are expressed in dynamic climbing. When we set up for a dyno, our body first compresses into the footholds. I call this the windup. How deep our windup goes depends on a few things. The distance to the target handhold, the distance between our current hand and footholds, and the overall sense of athletic confidence in the climber. From my experience, I found that two things typically work the best. One, do not wind up to full compression. Observe the best jumpers in sports and you will see that they never jump from a deep squat. They spring from their calves and utilize their kinetic chain to maximize height. Two, take as few practice windups as possible. Ideally, just wind up and go, quickly. This takes the thinking mind out of the equation and allows your body to act instinctively. Of course, there are exceptions to these guidelines and you must exercise your own wisdom to see what works best for you in your situation. Dynamic movement is a very interesting component of climbing. It wasn't something I was naturally drawn to at first, but the more I practiced the skills, the more I appreciated its usefulness. If you're aiming to become a well-rounded climber, definitely make dynamic moves a part of your training routine. Oh, and don't worry about falling. <laughs>